Ah, the ocarina. Coming from the Italian word oca, meaning goose, it's an ancient instrument that is played by people and links alike. Many gamers may know the ocarina from the Legend of Zelda series, but there's more history to it than what meets the eye. But Donish, you ask in your slightly pubescent voice, what even is an ocarina? It looks like a potato with a few holes in it, and an oversized straw in it, and it just looks so weird. Well, hold your horses, young one. Before I get into all the specifics of the ocarina itself, let's go back in time to learn about the history of the ocarina. A long time ago, around 12,000 years ago, the first known ocarinas appeared. The ocarina can be traced back to many cultures, most importantly the Mayans, the Aztecs, and the Incas. Many ocarinas were shaped like birds and animals, and the Chinese had its own form of ocarina called the Gizun, which is more round in shape and looks more like an egg with holes than a potato. The Chinese ocarina has ties with China's long history of dance and music. Fast forward to the year 1527. Hernan Cortes sent a group of Aztec musicians and dancers to the Emperor Charles V. Their performances were well received and they toured Europe, playing in various exhibitions. The ocarina soon gained popularity and it became a novelty item. However, the ocarinas had a limited number of holes, therefore it cannot play as many notes as real ocarina. Think of Dollarama quality ocarinas. It was little more than a toy. In the 19th century, a young man named Gusip Danatik, young baker and musician, invented a sweet potato ocarina with a protruding mouthpiece at the age of 17. His version of the ocarina had an accurate pitch, with an extended range of notes, something that the flea market's ocarinas could never do. Various sizes were made, and these enabled players to form ensembles. One ensemble still playing today is the <clears throat> Grupo Arcanistro Berdis, I don't know how to pronounce it either. In the First and Second World War, servicemen were given ocarinas to boost morale whenever they had the opportunity to play. After the World Wars, the soldiers brought their ocarinas home, and it became immensely popular throughout the US and Europe. However, it slowly lost popularity as another instrument called the recorder gained the population's interest. The ocarina almost became an obscure instrument but the gaming industry gave it a home in the Legend of Zelda series. The game Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time featured the ocarina, requiring the player to learn and play various songs throughout the game. Since Ocarina of Time became immensely popular, the ocarina did as well, boosting sales once again, sparking interest, mainly in the gaming community. Coincidence? I think not! Since the ocarina was tuned in the key of C and sounded almost like the recorder, it could be used in any composition that used a flute, piccolo, recorder, or any woodwind that was tuned in the key of C. Pieces of music that worked well with the ocarina are French and Bosnian folk music and vocal melodies. Medieval and Renaissance music also works very well. There are many types of ocarinas, such as the oriental ocarina, gem shores and inlines, which are basically a horn with holes in line with each other, multiple chamber polyphone ocarinas, multiple chamber extended range ocarinas, very, very large ocarinas, pendant ocarinas, which are smaller ocarinas that can be worn around the neck, Peruvian ocarinas, they don't really work, as they are cheaply made and all the holes are the same diameter, making it off tune. Filing the holes or filling it with glue or tape may help to retune the instrument. Too long didn't listen? Don't buy it. iPhone Smule app. By blowing into the microphone and pe pressing imaginary holes on this app, it can make various sounds closely resembling the ocarina. So now we've covered the history of the ocarina, but I still don't know how to play it. Do I like blow into one of these holes or something? Patience, young grasshopper. I'm getting there. There are many types of ocarinas, but they all have parts in common. For example, in this nine hole ocarina shown here, in the front of it there is the mouthpiece, a protruding piece that you blow into to produce the sound, finger holes. Holes you cover or uncover with your fingers to play different notes. Flipping the ocarina over, there is the thumb holes. Holes that you cover or uncover with your thumbs. The fipple. 
Also referred to as the air window or sound hole, the fipple is a hole that cuts the airflow in half, creating the sound of the ocarina. Do not touch the fipple, as it can affect the tone of the ocarina. Step 1. Take it out of the case. Step 2. Sanitize the mouthpiece. Step 3. Success! You assembled your ocarina. Now we know the ocarina inside out, and we can start playing the ocarina. To start, put your mouth on the mouthpiece. Don't eat it, just put your lips on it, like you would with a recorder. Hold the ocarina at an angle, about 45 degrees, and blow, articulating each note with their two or do sound. The ocarina is pressure sensitive, so do not blow too hard or too soft, as it will sound off tune. To play different notes, cover different holes. To play higher notes, bend your head down to get more air through the ocarina. Ew, my ocarina is all dirty. There's spit all over it. What did you do? Let your dog eat it? Anyways, it's all dirty now, so you have to clean it. Here's how. Step 1. To get rid of any saliva in the airway, blow hard into the mouthpiece. Step 1.5. If the ocarina is extremely dirty, submerge the ocarina in water. However, be quick, as some ocarinas are low-fired and can still absorb a quite amount of water. Step 1.75. Allow the ocarina to dry completely. Step 2. Clean the outside of the ocarina with baby wipes or a polishing cloth to get rid of any dirt or fingerprints. Step 3. Clean the airway by folding a piece of paper or cloth and rub the inside walls to get rid of any dried material. Step 4. Put the ocarina in your case. You're done. Don't ever use products containing ammonia or alcohol to clean the ocarina. It will damage the glaze and make it look horrible in general. What about antiseptic sprays? Not that either. It contains alcohol. Don't use scouring pads or harsh abrasive either, and it will scratch the ocarina badly. If you do this, shame on you. You monster. Don't insert metal objects into the mouthpiece, as it can also scratch the inside of the airway. Most importantly, don't touch the fipple. Ever. This is because you might damage it, ruining your ocarina completely. The reason good ocarinas are so expensive is because they put a lot of time and effort into the fipple, so it can produce the right sound. Even if the fipple gets bent or chipped a bit, the ocarina will sound heavily off tune, so it's game over. Don't drop it either, especially if it's clay. If you do, this will happen. All of this hard to take in? Well, I made an acronym just for you. It's called DON'T. It stands for don't mess up your ocarina. Nowadays, the ocarina is rarely ever used in music, as it's usually replaced by the flute or the recorder. However, a French musician and composer, Paul de Senneville, gave it a home in 1991. He composed a song called Song of Ocarina, which the name suspiciously sounds like a song you would learn in Ocarina of Time. The song was composed in Paris, France, the same city Paul was born in. The piece is an instrumental duet between the cello and a six-hole pendant ocarina. It's performed by Jean-Philippe Audin and Diego Modena. Becoming a huge success in French, it became the first instrumental ever to top the charts in 1992. According to Muzz Hit Tubes, the cello and the ocarina compete in expressiveness on a swinging rhythmic. This video has taught you about the history of the ocarina, parts of the ocarina, and a composition that features the ocarina. You're basically Einstein. Go on and live your dream of playing the ocarina.